Hi there, my name is Dushan, this is my colleague Mindegas, and today we have an unusual video for you. We're going to show you how to perform a manual engine startup procedure, followed by a crossbreed engine startup procedure in another video. What's interesting about these procedures is that both of them are the supplementary procedures for the engine start, and while other supplementaries are read and done by the pilot monitoring, these supplementary procedures, because they have to do with the engine start, are read by the pilot monitoring and performed by the pilot flying. So, when is the manual engine start procedure used? It is basically used when you have either uh, reduced bleed performance due to either high temperatures or uh, high altitude airfield. Uh, also, when the exhaust gas temperature uh, margin is reduced or due to marginal performance of the external pneumatic power group. Uh, for this video, we are currently parked in a gate in the Zurich airport, uh, pretty much uh, ready uh, for pushback, and we will be flying uh, to Hamburg. So without further ado, uh, I think we can start okay. the video. Okay, okay before start checklist. Uh, before start checklist, uh, cockpit recreation. Completed. Completed. Uh, gear pins and covers. Removed. Uh, signs? On auto. Uh, ADRS? ADRS. Nav? Uh, fuel quantity? Fuel quantity 6,200 kilograms. Take off data? Take off data. Zero fuel weight CG 26.4, zero fuel weight 59 tons, blood fuel 6.2 tons. Set? Bear reference? Bear reference. QNH 9908, 1400 feet set. Uh, QNH 9908, 1400 feet set uh, down to the line. Okay, Minigas, let's get the clearance. Okay. Uh, Zurich delivery BAA 1012, uh, request clearance to Hamburg. BAA 1012, request clearance to Hamburg. Clear to Hamburg via Zurich East to Victor Departures, Quark 711, BA 1012, thank you. BA 1012, red back correct, contact April on 121 decimal 85 when ready for pushback. 121 decimal 85 when uh, ready for pushback, BA 1012. Okay, let's see with the ground helmet. Copy. Ground from cockpit. Go ahead. Are you guys ready down there? Doors and hatches are closed and steering pin is inserted. We are ready. Okay, stand by. We're gonna call for push and be advised we'll be starting engines number two, then number one. Okay, let's go. Okay, below the line. Below the line. Uh, windows and doors? Closed. Closed. Uh, beacon? On. Uh, thrust levers? Thrust levers idle. Parking brake? Parking brake is set. Uh, before search checklist completed. Okay, let's get the pushback clearance. Syria Capron BA1012 request startup and pushback uh, and be advised we will be using high idle power for startup. BA1012, you're clear for pushback and startup facing east and high idle approved. Pushback and startup facing uh, east, uh, high idle approved. BA1012, thank you. Ground cockpit. Go ahead. We've been cleared for push facing east and be advised we need a clear area behind us for high idle to start. Okay, push back facing east to this parking brake, please. Parking brake released. Okay, we are pushing back. Okay, let's go with the manual engine start procedure. Okay, manual engine start procedure. Uh, note, during a manual engine start, if uh, the flight crew suspects an engine start malfunction or if an engine related ECAM alert is triggered, the pilot flying must abort the start sequence as follows. Before the pilot flying sets the engine master lever to on, uh, the pilot flying must set the engine uh, manual start push button switch to off. After the pilot flying sets the engine master lever to on, the pilot flying must set the engine master lever to off and then give the engine master start push button uh, switch to off. Uh, in that case, the flight crew should consider a dry crank cycle of the affected engine before they perform another start attempt. Then, in the case of an ECAM alert, the pilot flying must announce ECAM actions in accordance with the ECAM management philosophy. Thrust levers idle. Uh, caution. Uh, the engines start regardless of the thrust lever position. If the thrust lever levers are not set to idle, the thrust rapidly increases to the corresponding thrust lever position, causing a hazardous situation. Uh, engine mode selector. Normal, then ignition start. 
Note, if both engines are started manually, the following procedure applies to one engine at a time. Okay. Uh, when all engine parameters are available on the upper ECAM display, which means uh, no amber cross is displayed on the upper ECAM, uh, which is not the case right now, uh, engine manual start push button switch uh, on, start valve check in line, oil pressure increase check, N2 increase check. If N2 does not reach 20%, uh, pack valves check closed. If the APU bleed is used for engine start and the pack valves are closed, shed the APU electrical loads as follows. Uh, galley and cabin off. Push back will complete it. That's my Full checklist. Holding. Parking brake set. Thanks guys, and show us the pin on the right side. Okay, continue checklist. Continuing, uh, if needed, uh, shed also blue electrical pump uh, off, fuel cross feed on, fuel pumps except right tank pump number two off, blower override, cabin fans off. When N2 reaches 22% of the maximum motoring speed, uh, note, the maximum motoring speed is defined as the speed at which N2 acceleration is less than 1% in approximately five seconds, uh, engine master uh, on, chronometer start, uh, igniters A and B check on, fuel flow increase check, the 50 se uh, 15 seconds uh, maximum after fuel flow increase, EGT increase check, and one increase check. Uh, if the electrical power supply is interrupted during the start sequence, initiated uh, by loss of ECAM displays, uh, abort the start by setting the engine master lever to off, then perform a 30 second drag run. Uh, when two, N2 reaches 50%, uh, start valve check cross line, igniters A and B check off, main engine parameters check normal, and secondary engine parameters also check normal. Uh, note CFM 56-5B1 uh, and B2 engines, uh, N2 accelerates uh, slowly from 50% to idle. Uh, start abort is not required as long as N2 increases. Uh, engine manual uh, Push button uh, switch off, engine mode selector normal. When no other uh, engine uh, requires to be started manually, shed its systems restore, SOP engine start resume. Okay, let's start the procedure. Okay. Manual engine start procedure. Thrust levers idle. idle. Engine mode selector normal, then ignition start. Warm. Ignition starts. Uh, when all engine parameters are available on the upper ECAM uh, display, uh, which it is right now. Yes, when the amber crosses disappear, this means actually that the fading has been fully powered up. Correct. Uh, engine manual start push button uh, switch uh, on. Engine number two manual starts push button switch on. Start valve check in line. Start in line. Uh, this is the start yep. valve. Yep. Uh, oil pressure increase check. Slowly increasing. Yep. Uh, N2 increase check. N2 uh, increasing. Increasing, yep. When N2 reaches 22% or the maximum motoring speed, engine master uh, on. Engine number two, master on. Chronometer on. Igniters A and B check on. Yep. Uh, fuel flow increase, uh, fuel check. Increase. 15 seconds maximum after fuel flow increase, EGT increase, check. Uh, N1 increase, uh, check. When N2 reaches 50%, uh, start valve, check cross line. Cross line. Uh, igniters A and B, check off. Uh, main engine parameters, check normal. So we basically have to apply the 246 rule, which basically states that we have to have 20% N1 about 400 degrees Celsius EGT and about 60% N2, which is the case right now, so we are all good. Okay, secondary engine parameters, uh, check normal. Uh, engine manual start push button switch off. Engine number two manual start push button off. Engine mode selector uh, normal. No. When no other uh, Engine requires to be started manually, shed its system is restored, SOP, uh, engine start. Okay, since we'll be doing the cross engine start, we won't be needing this, so Correct. it's completed. Yep. 
Uh, all right, so we have successfully started uh, manual and started our Airbus uh, engine number two. And for the engine number one, we will be starting it by using the crossbleed procedures. So that will be in the next video. So see you then. Thanks for watching.